Hello, Keith Ruck here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today I want to share with you guys a little bit of information, a little bit of news about a little upgrade we just did here in the shop. Uh, ever since we've been in our shop out here, I've been using American Rotary Phase Converter to generate the three-phase power that I use in the shop to operate all my machinery. And uh, these guys have been great to work with. I will say they are a sponsor of my channel. They have been for quite some time, and, and I will say this for American Rotary as well. They have been very supportive of the entire YouTube machinist community. So many of the channels that you may be watching besides mine that are uh, dealing with old machinery and machine shop type stuff where you need to have three-phase power in the workshop. These guys have been working with that whole community for quite some time. They've been very supportive. They help support several of the events that we host every year, like the, uh, the Barzi Summer Bash that's gonna be coming up in June. They're, they're a big sponsor of that as well. Uh, and I say that just to, to, to make it clear, they are a sponsor of my channel and they have helped me out personally as far as helping get a phase converter in my shop here. And uh, a couple of months ago, I was visiting uh, with Chris over at American Rotary and we were talking about how the, the phase converter that I've been using was working in the shop and everything. And in the conversation, he says, you know, we've gone in and made some improvements and uh, done some new changes, uh, some, some things to make these phase converters better in the three years since I put mine in. And we ended up working out a deal where they actually upgraded my phase converter to one of their newer models that has some of these newer features in there. I'm gonna be showing you some of that here in just a few minutes. But anytime I ever start talking about phase converters, three phase power, I always get a ton of questions in the comments and a lot of, a lot of people just asking just general questions. So I, I always like to take an opportunity to try to get these covered before we really get into things. So number one, why do you need three phase power? Well guys, in a lot of your industrial type machines like my milling machines and lathes, et cetera, they're gonna run on three phase power. Whereas at least here in the US, most homes, most residential properties and so forth only have single phase power. And if you think about it, I, I'm not an electrician. I'm not even gonna try to get into the weeds on this, explaining this, but with single phase, you basically have one line coming into the house. Uh, with three phase, you have three lines of powers coming into the shop. And those three lines of power, they're, they're, they're separated out uh, kind of in these, I'm not even gonna try to explain it, but the best way I can explain it is if you, when you have a single phase motor, think of it as one guy standing there with a sledgehammer driving a tent stake in the ground. If you think about putting up a circus tent, when three phase motor, you got three guys sitting there hammering on it. So in that same amount of time, basically you have the power on that 60 cycles per second. And you know, every second you're getting 60 hits of that hammer going on that peg. But with three phase power, you've got 60 hits per second on three different lines coming in. So it just greatly uh, increases the efficiency of the motors makes them run a lot smoother. Also uh, actually uses, I won't say uses less power, but uses less amperage to be able to run the same amount of horsepower. There's a lot of advantages to three phase over single phase, particularly in motors. Now, why do we need to have phase converters? Why don't we just call up the power company and say, hey, I want three phase power in my shop that outs behind my house. And this is something a lot of my viewers have a difficult time understanding, particularly people who are outside of the US because in a lot of parts of the world, three-phase power coming into your house is commonplace. Here in the US though, three-phase power is pretty much, I won't say 100%, but for the most part, it's only gonna be available to industrial types of uh, uh, customers. They're typically not going to put three-phase, at least not by default, into a residential home. In a lot of taste cases, and, and really in a whole lot of cases, they're not even gonna have three phase power on the pole, like in subdivisions and stuff like that. They've just got a uh, single phase power going in these areas. So it's not a matter of, hey, let's just run and wire out there to the street and bring three phase in. For example, where I live at, uh, I live in an area, it's, it's probably about a half a mile down a road to get to my home uh, from the main road that's out here. And the main road isn't really that big of a road, but out on the main road, there is three phase power on the pole but coming back in here to where I'm at, I've only had single phase power. So if I wanted to have three phase power off the pole, I would have to convince the power company that they need to run about a half a mile of wire down here to my house to be able to come into my shop. Will they do it? 
Well, if they'll do it, I'm probably going to have to pay for that. Reason being, let's face it, guys, I'm not using enough electricity in my shop to justify them spending that kind of money to bring the power in. If I was had a big plant here, we were running all kinds of machinery, you know, seven days a week, 10 hours a day, yeah, they're gonna make their money back pretty quick. And a lot of times power company, it's, 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 it all comes down to a business decision for those guys. So unless I'm willing to pay the bill, they're not gonna bring it in here. And in my situation, it just ain't gonna happen. Uh, I've actually talked to the power company. I don't remember the exact figures, but it was a really big number to bring three-phase power in here just was not worth it. So next choice, I can make my own three-phase power. And that's what I'm using the rotary phase converter for. The rotary phase converter basically brings single-phase power in. We're bringing in 220 volt power into the, three, into the phase converter. It has a motor generator in there. Uh, and again, I'm not gonna try to explain how all this works because I would screw it up if I did. But bottom line is, is that they're able to generate that, that, that missing leg, that third leg of the three-phase piece that we need, and I'm basically able to make my own three-phase power from single-phase power. So for a lot of guys, particularly home shop guys or people who are in rural areas or maybe even, even sometimes shops. I used to work in a machine shop. We were too far off the grid. We actually ran the whole machine shop off of, off of a rotary phase converter. It can be done. So uh, that's the choice that, that I'm going with. There are other options out there. There are static phase converters. A static phase converter is similar to a rotary phase converter, but instead of having a generator in there that's turning to generate that, that leg, it's, it's doing it electronically. Quite honestly, my opinion is, is that the static phase converters are a lot less efficient and uh, eh, I'm just not a big fan of them. The other option and what I always get a lot of questions about are variable frequency drives or VFDs. So a variable frequency drive, uh, there are certain models that you can feed 220 volts single phase into and it will actually generate that third leg. Uh, a rotary, I mean a, a variable frequency drive rather, what they're really designed for is exactly what's in the name, is varying the frequency of the power. So most power's at 60 hertz, or you know, that little sign bar's going up and down 60 times per second. Uh, but if you want to speed the motor up or slow the motor down, you can change the, the, the frequency. So go to 50 frequency or go to 70 frequency, and that will, will give you the variable speed. That's really what a VFD is designed to do. It has a lot of other features in there as far as motor control go, goes, like uh, dynamic braking and some things like this. They're a really valuable tool and a very valuable piece of equipment to have used for the right application. Honestly though, at least my opinion, and others will disagree with me, but my opinion is if you're just using a VFD to generate three-phase power, uh, a rotary phase converter might be a better option. Particularly if you're in a situation like I am where you have many different machines that you're wanting to do. Yeah, if you just got a milling machine, got a three horsepower motor on it, and that's all you're gonna have, yeah, a VFD might be a good choice there. It might be a good choice. But in my shop, I counted them up before I did this video. I have 23 different three-phase power, three-phase motors that, that run in this shop. Not all at the same time, but 23 different machines. They're all different horsepower. They're all different sizes. They all have different needs. And uh, in my case, it really, the, the VFD choice really is not a viable choice because basically I'd have to put a VFD on every single machine uh, maybe not every single one, but I've got anything from a, a half a horsepower motors up to 10 horsepower motors and could potentially even go bigger machines than that. In fact, I'm hoping to get a new milling machine in here at some point in time that's probably going to have a 20 horsepower motor or a 15 horsepower motor on it. So when you start getting into those bigger motor sizes, uh, the VFDs start getting real expensive. In fact, I looked online my big 28 inch Monarch lathe that I have to run it on a VFD, just the VFD by itself. And I'm not talking about a El Cheapo one that's made in China, but a decent brand name VFD. It, it costs about as much as what a rotary phase converter costs. And I would need to have that on multiple machines in here. So in my situation, uh, the, the VFDs really aren't a good option unless I need it for the motor controls. And I actually have a, two machines in here that have VFDs on them, but I'm actually feeding them three-phase power 
rather than single phase power. Another big disadvantage in my mind with the VFDs are is if you're feeding that thing uh, the 220 volt power to generate the three phase power, you have to run really big wires. You, it, it takes a lot of amps to, to, to power that VFD and then bring out a smaller, uh, smaller amperage actually going to the machine because you've got to have that amperage in your two feed wires coming in there. So in my case, most of my machinery in here are run on 20 amp circuits. I can use a regular size piece of wire, but if I had to run 220 volt uh, outlets to all these at a higher amperage, you know, to get that 20 amps out of the VFD, I don't know exactly what it is, but I'm gonna guess I'm probably gonna have to run a 30 to 40 amp circuit to do that. And again, in my case, with all these different machines, all that copper really starts adding up in a hurry. And uh, you can really spend a lot of money just doing your wiring. So anyway, the rotary phase converter, again, it generates the three phase power. That's what I'm using to power my shop. Let me show you the setup we have in here. I'm gonna show you a little bit about the new phase converter we got as well. So here you go, guys. This is the actual phase converter that I'm running. And this is the, the American Rotary. This is their AI series uh, box here. And they, cut, they have several different versions of uh, phase converters that are available there. This particular one is in a nice waterproof uh, enclosure that is actually made to go outdoors. So for me, that was a big advantage. I've got this outside the shop. It's not taking up space inside my shop. I don't have any noise from this thing running inside the shop. It's all outdoors. And uh, again, it's designed to be outdoors and uh, performs very well in that, that way. Now they've done some, some nice improvements to these boxes since the first one that I have uh, out here before. The other one was also an AI series, but they've done some improvements. And one of the things that they've done is they've really done a good job, a better job of sealing this thing up. They've got these uh, nice uh, little latches on here before they had a, a screws that held it on. So it's a little bit easier to get into. You don't have to get in here very often, but it is easier to do now. They got a nice rubber seal on this that seals it all up really good before at least this backside was not sealed up as well. Uh, it, was, it would keep the water out, but it wasn't watertight like it is now. Uh, this is the front side. This is kind of where all the electronics happen. Uh, they have some, uh, com a computer board in here that's pretty much proprietary to American Rotary that helps keep this thing in balance. These are mostly different capacitors and stuff in here that help, again, balancing these loads when you do your, uh, everything that's going on. And then in the back side, it has a uh, motor generator. So basically a generator that's in here is, is, uh, is uh, actually built by Baldor. Uh, so it's very similar to a Baldor motor, uh, but it's, it's designed by American Rotary. It's custom built for American Rotary by Baldor, and it is designed for these particular phase converters. One of the things that I really like about this particular box is that it is 100% American made, uh, which is a, a big plus in, uh, in my book. But anyway, I wanted to show you the box itself. Uh, I've had the other one out here for about three years before this one, and it has done a great job. And I have no doubts that this one here is going to as well. Let's go in the shop and let me show you how I got my wiring done. So basically right on the other side of this wall behind me, this is where my phase converter is, just right outside. And uh, I have a 400 amp service coming into the shop. It's split into two 200 amp uh, panels. One of them pretty much provides all the lighting and receptacles for the shop itself. The other 200 amp panel is a, I've got a separate panel. It's also on the outside of the shop over here. And its primary function is, is running the phase converter. I have a couple of other things that are on it as well, but primarily running the phase converter. I'm running a 40 horsepower uh, phase converter here, uh, which when you're sizing these, you can call American Rotary. They can help you figure out what size you need based on your load or, you know, if you're just running one machine or multiple machines, they've got engineers there who can help you figure out exactly what size you need. But generally speaking, you know, if, if you're going to be running a 20 horsepower motor, uh, which is kind of what I size mine for, thinking that I could potentially have up, up to a 20 horse motor, you need to pretty much double that in the horsepower. So a 20 horsepower motor run, I need a 40 horsepower phase converter. If you're running a five horsepower motor, it's the biggest motor, which is probably home shop. That's probably what most people are gonna be looking at. You need to have a 10 horsepower phase converter. Can you get by with less? In some cases, yes, but really ideally, if you need to start that thing under a load or something like that, 
that particular ratio is typically what we're looking at. So again, I'm running a 40 horsepower and it, I think I've got 150 amps just going to the phase converter. I think the book says you can minimally go with about 120 amps on that, that particular size. Of course, I'm not using all those amps, but I have that available to me. If I put a really big load in here, or I'm starting a big motor. Usually uh, it's that startup is when you need that, that, that peak in amperage. And it, once the motor gets going, it'll, it'll kind of calm down a little bit. So anyway, everything's right out here and I'm feeding it into a panel. And I have a three phase panel here. Um, and this basically is now feeding the rest of the shop. So in my case, because I have so many different machines and I have so many different places where I have electrical drops, I've got this wired up just like I had three phase power coming in off the street. So I've got a, a separate three phase uh, panel here. I've still got my, my single phase stuff is all on a separate panel, but all of my three phase stuff is being fed through this panel right here. And of course we have circuits that go out to different places. And in my case, I actually have a sub panel on the other side of the shop and it just has to do with the running the wires. And the way my shop is built, it was gonna be really difficult for me to be able to feed everything back into this one panel. So instead I just ran one uh, wire over to the other side and I have a, a separate sub panel over there that I'm feeding one side of the shop off and one side over here. Also saves me a little bit of money on wire because even though the wires going to the sub panel are a larger size wire, when I figured the, the cost of running all the additional length of wires back into this panel, it was actually cheaper for me to put the other one over there if that makes sense. So anyway, I got everything into going to different, uh, different circuits here. Uh, most everything is 20 amps, except one of my bigger, bigger machines, which is running uh, on, on 30 amps. Uh, but I got plenty of capacity here. When I started, I got a control station inside the shop here that I can start and stop the phase converter. This was actually hooked up on the previous one. And uh, I just flip it over and uh, I don't guess you can see it, but there is a green light, yeah, I guess you can see it right here that, that comes on that indicates to me that the phase converter is running. That's just a visual indication. It's actually so quiet uh, that when I'm working in the shop or getting ready to leave in the afternoon, I don't hear the phase converter running uh, in the background very easily. Of course, I'm also half deaf, which probably enters into the equation as well. But this just gives me a visual indication. And then I've got uh, the off switch there. Now, one neat thing, let me grab this. One big improvement that I have in this new phase converter over the old one is, is that they actually have a remote control switch now that I can do. So basically I just push a button, it turns on, I hit the stop button, it turns off. And I've walked around, I've got a pretty large shop here. It's 40 42 feet wide, 80 feet long, and I can, power on the phase converter anywhere inside the shop, no problem at all. I've walked around and tried it. It works great everywhere. Usually I just keep it over by the, the door where I go out because usually when I'm leaving, I'll look over and say, oh, I forgot to turn the phase converter off. Let me go switch it off. So another neat feature that they have built into this phase converter, and I do not have it all wired in and, and configured quite yet, but they actually have a really neat system that uh, you can actually wire your different machines into the phase converter so that when you turn a machine on, if the phase converter is not already on, it will turn the phase converter on just by hitting the switch. It does require running some extra wires to the machines to do that, uh, but this one has that built into it. And when that feature is enabled, and again, I'm hoping to get that enabled on mine or get wired in on mine soon, but when that happens, there's a, there's a, a switch in there or, or that you can turn where when the, it's detecting that no power has been using for a period of time, anywhere from 0.3 minutes to 30 minutes, it'll automatically turn it off, which again, I think is a big plus for me because sometimes I have on occasion, not many times, but gone up to the house in the evening, come back down the next morning and realize I left the phase converter running all night long. Not good. Uh, with this automatic sensing, it will actually detect, hey, there's no need for this, my machine to be running right now or the phase will be running it will turn itself off automatically. And then whenever you need it back on, you hit the button and it just comes back on. So a couple of neat features there. Well, there you go, guys. That's a little bit about my phase converter. I get a lot of questions about this. I actually get a lot of emails and a lot of messages on Facebook and et cetera, asking me about phase converters, how I'm doing things. I've actually done a video before about this, but 
uh, really honestly because of the, the volume of interest that I have in this, I just felt like it was time to do that. Plus I wanted to show you some of those new features in the new box that we have out there. So the advantage though that you get if you've watched this video to this point is that American Rotary's got a deal for you, okay? They will give a discount just because you watched this video. They will give you a discount if you go to buy a new, new phase, phase converter from American Rotary. So if you get one of their AD series, ADX series, or AI series, mine's an AI series, uh, you can go to their website, you can see the differences between these. Uh, but if you get one of those three different models of pretty much whatever size you need, American Rotary will give you a 10% discount on your purchase if you use the checkout code VINTAGE10. Vintage 10, as in VintageMachinery.org, which is what I am, and 10 being 10%. So you can save 10% off of your purchase just by using that checkout code. And uh, give them a call. Give them, if you've got any questions, I really encourage you to give them a call at American Rotary. Here's their contact information down here. I've got their phone number. I've got their, um, their, their email address or website where you can, go, you can send them a message, I guess, through there and they will be more than happy to talk to you about your particular situation and help you come up with the best solution for your scenario. Everybody's a little bit different. These guys are experts in what they do. They can help you come up with the right choice and the right solution. Yes, can you go out and build your own phase converter? You can, but honestly, yeah, you might save a little bit of money, but you're not gonna have the features, you're not gonna have uh, as well balanced of a machine. You're not gonna have a machine that comes anywhere close to the quality that you're gonna get from something like you get from American Rotary. So I highly encourage you, get in touch with them. Tell them you, you heard about them from vintagemachinery.org or Keith Rucker uh, and use that discount code. Use it to your advantage to save a little bit of money when you're buying a phase converter. I have heard from many, many, many viewers out there who are using this equipment. They, they, they talk to me, I hear from them all the time, and everybody that I've ever talked with has been very happy, very satisfied with American Rotary. And I'll say this, if you got a problem, you can give them a call, they will help you figure your problem out and come up with a solution to it. They're a good US American-based company, their support people are all right here in the US of A, they're great to work with. So anyway, enough on that. Thanks for watching as always, guys. Leave me comments if you like. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And guys, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.